Okay. I will need the glasses, but... Uh, for after? Stop one. one okay. Two, okay. Open. Open the projector to just press it on. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is the pointer back and forward. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Hey, nice to meet you. She's coming every summer. She's coming to, to visit us for three months or something like that. So, yes. Okay, so now we start with the second uh, lecture of uh, today. Uh, Professor Huerta from uh, Bariloche uh, will start her lectures on uh, entanglement in QFT. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, hello everybody. Um, thanks to the to the organizers for the invitation. It's a, it's a great pleasure to to be here in Trieste. I, I should say to be back. In, in fact, I was a, a postdoc at the ICTP many many years ago, almost uh, 15 years ago. So, uh, in fact, it's a it's a double pleasure because. It was at that time that uh, I had started working on the field with uh, Horacio Cassini, the field I'm, I'm going to talk about today, entanglement entropy in quantum field theory. So let me write. Big enough? No. In quantum field theory, okay, yes. Uh, I understand we are going to have four lectures, so we have time to start from, from the very beginning and to finish with some recent applications. So let me write the outline, a tentative outline of the talks. Um, the idea start with uh, basic definitions. Properties, we are going to use pro properties and some calculations where things are, are well defined. Then we are going to go to the continuum limit for quantum field theories, entanglement entropy in quantum field theories. I'm going to discuss one method which is a replica method to calculate entanglement entropy in general. But I'm going to discuss an example the free fermion in one plus one dimensions. Okay, and then the last two lectures, I, I'm not sure about the the, the order, but I, I would like to discuss what happens with the uh, gauge fields, okay, and also the relation between entanglement entropy and uh, 
renormalization flow in, in quantum field theory. Okay. Three C theorems in two, three, and four dimensions. Okay? So this is our idea. So as I promised to start from the very beginning, let me let me start with uh, revising the idea of uh, of entropy. Okay, this is uh, I, I found this is a, a concept that uh, has been uh, rediscovered many times along physics history, uh, and each time has gained a wider interpretation or a different interpretation. So, uh, at the first place, we, we find the entropy in the context of uh, thermodynamics, okay? And uh, we understand the entropy as a measure of uh, disorder, okay? Uh, the entropy in, enters in, in the game uh, in the balance between energy and mechanical work. And in fact, it's, it's interesting because the, the name of the entropy was uh, formed uh, on purpose, uh, very similar to the, to the word energy, and, and also has inside the word transformation, okay? Inside, uh, tropy comes from the Greek, from transformation. So we would say that we understand entropy as a measure of disorder, but then we can extend this idea to quantum mechanical systems and uh, we can we can say the entropy takes a, a new meaning as a measure of uncertainty. We can say, I have three different definitions. Let me see. And also, from quantum information, we have the interpretation as a measure of information, okay? Information lost in sending a message, for example. So as, uh, as you see, uh, we have so far three different interpretations for entropy, and, and we are not done still because we have to add the, the word entanglement, so the story uh, doesn't finish there. But uh, let me illustrate this idea with, uh, I like uh, a conversation between Shannon and von Neumann. Shannon was looking for a name for the entropy we know now as the Shannon entropy. And he, he asked for advice for Newman, and I, I bring the, the conversation they have, it says, I thought of calling it information, but the word was overly used, so I decided to call it uncertainty. And the answer von Neumann says, you should call it entropy for two reasons. In the first place, your uncertainty function has been used in statistical mechanics under that name, so it already has a name. And in the second place, and more important, nobody knows what entropy really is. So in a debate, you will always have the advantage. So it's uh, a good way to start. So, uh, but as, as I was saying, we have to add still the word entanglement, and for that we have to, to add new ingredients, okay, to the, to the game. And uh, what we have to think now is in a system that uh, is divided in two parts. And for some reason, you have an observer that has access, access to one of the, of the subsystems. So 
the idea, this idea uh, can be realized doing a partial trace uh, in your density matrix. Okay, you describe your state with a density matrix. A partial trace will do the, the work of this uh, partial access to the observables, to the, to the, you know, the degrees of freedom that are uh, accessible. And then you calculate the entropy associated with this local density matrix or reduced density matrix, okay? This is known as the entanglement entropy. In general, you will say that this quantity measure the entanglement between the two subsystems, okay? But uh, now we need to add in quantum field theory, so we need to go to the continuum and uh, let's say that our subsystems now, uh, you are interested in a, in a region, okay. you have a special region, okay, B, that induce in a way partition on the Hilbert space and uh, your state, global state is described by a density matrix and then you trace over the degrees of freedom that uh, you cannot observe and uh, finally, you calculate the entropy associated with this reduced density matrix. So this is, roughly speaking, what we are going to do for free fields, for conformal field theories, for certain regions, for, I mean, in general, this, uh, this quantity is very difficult to calculate, okay? So um, we know how, to, did, how, how to, to calculate this for certain geometries only, for example, um, we are going to, to consider geometries with uh, a lot of symmetries or theories with a lot of symmetries. We need the symmetries in order to, to do the calculation, okay? So, uh, let me start. As you see, uh, the entanglement entropy has a strong relation with the density matrix, so let's start with some definitions for the density matrix and properties, okay? Um, Okay, so in general, in, in quantum mechanics, you describe your state using a, a density matrix, okay? This is a, the more general way to describe a state. Uh, and the expression for the density matrix, have the probabilities, okay? And this, let's say, that describes a statistical mixture of vectors This is the most general expression we can write for the density matrix. And let's see some properties. It's an Hermitian operator, okay? Uh, 
it admits spectral representation. Now we are going to write almost the same, the same expression, but now this are orthonormal vectors. Okay. These are positive numbers. And of course, um, has to be one, okay? Then, you know, this is positive. Infinite. Okay, this has to be in order to have uh, real probabilities. Then, other thing, okay, place one and uh, there's a way to write expectation, expectation values of uh, operators in terms of uh, the density matrix, okay? And uh, from here, for example, you can, you can see if this uh, operator is the identity matrix, you get immediately that the trace has to be one. Uh, And the last one, we will say that, uh, let's define what, what, what is a pure state. So we will say that if the probabilities are uh, all zero, except for one, then this uh, density matrix matrix represents your state, okay? Um, and also, in this case, you can prove that rho square is equal to rho, okay? Uh, only for pure state, for, for pure states. In general, here, in general, what you have is that the trace of rho square equal to one, and again, this is one. when the state is pure. Okay. So, uh, so far we have, we are at this point here. Now we, we would like to introduce what happens when we trace uh, and we define a reduced density matrix. So, Let's go here now. Sorry. Is positive? See, see, yes, you are right. Yes. In, I mean, in, in, in general, you will say that it's semi-definite, but what we are going to use are cases where it's uh, positive definite.
Okay, let's see what happens when we trace partially. The idea was uh, introduced by Dirac. Okay. So the idea is that suppose you have two subsystems, A and B, corresponding Hilbert spaces, okay, and you have a global state. Living in H A times H B, okay? So what we can do is to introduce a base in this sum over KL okay and uh, what we are going to ask is that the sum lambda KL is equal to one square okay then, for this state, the density matrix is just this expression here. And we can write explicitly this is the sum, say KL is. Okay, and then we are going to define as the trace over B of this density matrix here, okay? And what we get is that Simply tracing over B. Okay, so like this. Okay? So uh, what is interesting is that this reduced density matrix gives you the right expectation values for the operators. Okay? when the operator okay, acts in the corresponding subsystem. So this is, and now from here, we can go to the next step, and we can calculate the, the entropy associated with this density matrix, okay, this is the usual von Neumann entropy, and this is 
introduced in 1927. The same formula, we can use it with a reduced density matrix or with the global matrix, okay? This is just the quantum generalization, okay, of the statistical entropy that measures the number of microstates, okay, for a given macrostate. Okay, so another interesting thing you can you can prove is that when you calculate the the entropy associated with a pure state, what you get zero. So it's uh, another way to prove if, if uh, or to test if a state is pure or, pure or not, or mixed. You can prove it, okay? Uh, another interesting thing is that the von Neumann entropy is maximal and it corresponds to the log of n. Maximally, state where n is the dimension of the Hilbert space. And here, I, I, I would like to stress this, this property because I'm, I'm going to use it for applications later, the, the entropy is uh, additive okay. or dependent systems. What I mean is that if you take the entropy of uh, of a state which is just the, the tensor product of two density matrix, matrices, what you get is the sum of the entropies, okay? But in general, this is not true, and what happens is that what you get is something called strong subadditivity, um, write it strongly. Subadditive. Okay. And uh, let me write it here. Suppose. Sub three partitions, okay, let's say one, two, and three, what you have is that the entropy oh, I, I, I use numbers, one, two, three, plus S Just one, two plus S and three. Okay? This is something that was proved at Liev and Ruskai nineteen three. 
three, okay? And uh, in general, what you're going to find is, uh, as we are going to talk about regions, is that the entropy of the union plus the entropy of the intersection of regions, uh, and on this side, you have the entropy of, I mean, we're going to have this, are going to, to find the, the same expression as the entropy of the union, let's say, one, two, plus the entropy, let's call it A, okay, and you will find A union B, A intersection B, S or equal. This is the expression perhaps you will find in the literature, okay? So now, um, let's see what happens when we calculate the, the entanglement entropy. Um, Principle, these this, uh, properties I wrote here also works for reduced density matrices, okay? But let's see some special cases we are going to be interested in, okay? Um, for example, As I already mentioned, we are going to say that entanglement entropy is a, is a good measure of entanglement only when the global state is pure, okay? Because only in that case you have this uh, partition uh, of the Hilbert space as a tensor product. So, uh, Here, what we are saying is that the definition is, okay, it's the same thing, it's, it's the von Neumann entropy associated to the reduced density matrix. This is what we are going to call entanglement entropy associated to the region A. And uh, suppose we have two subsystems A, B, and the global state is pure, then both reduced density matrices have equal eigenvalues, and then have the same entanglement entropy associated, okay? This is something you can, you can prove also, just using the definitions I gave you. So for example, let's take a, a system with uh, two spins. going to consider a system with two particles, one half particles, okay, and uh, let's consider, for example, this state. This is one of the EPR pairs, okay, um, Bell states. What I mean with this is that uh, 
belongs to the particle A and this to the particle B, okay? And uh, you calculate the entanglement entropy of the state, you will see that gives zero, this is a pure state, but you don't get zero if you trace partially over B or over E, okay? You can prove it this again as an exercise. So the idea is that even if you start with a vacuum, for example, with a pure state, you get an entanglement entropy if you trace partially, for example, uh, you trace over half of the space or, or wherever, I mean, the region you, you choose, you can get an entanglement entropy different from zero, even if you start with a vacuum, okay, for example. Uh, so now we, we are ready to give a definition of entanglement. So, we are going to say that a state partit system Not entangled. If the global density matrix is just a superposition of pure states. that if the state the global state okay not entangle sure then the only possibility trivial case, okay? But if the global state you are but entangled then will have this property for the entanglement entropy, okay? And in this case, this entanglement entropy is a good measure of entanglement. Only in this case, okay? So we say, okay, um, we have all these definitions. We, we would like to see if uh, this uh, entropy has something to do with the thermodynamical entropy we know, okay? Uh, so let me, let me show you that In fact, the entanglement entropy is a little bit more general than 
the thermodynamical entropy, but enters in the same family, in a way. So is it Let's see, um, say, this is our question now, and for that let's, let's take a, a system. Okay, uh, in thermal equilibrium, canonical ensemble, we know how to write the probability. Just with some normalization. Okay, this is, uh, this is just the probability. Finding the system, finding the system. State. Okay. And then once you have the expression for the probability, you can write the density matrix. Let's say an operator, it has this expression here, and now we know how to calculate the entropy. And this gives you just partition function. Okay, do you agree with this? And on the other hand, from the thermodynamic side, we have uh, the free energy is just the energy minus temperature times the entropy, okay? And from here, we get just I mean, the free energy can be written in terms of the log of uh, the partition function. So you see, you get the same thing, okay? So the idea, what we can see here, is that in general, the entanglement entropy is also thermodynamic entropy but it's more general because it comes from a density matrix that has in general this, this form here, where this is not the Hamiltonian, but something called the modular Hamiltonian, or some people call it uh, entanglement Hamiltonian. Okay. Uh, in the case the Hamiltonian is given by the Hamiltonian of the system, you have the standard thermodynamic entropy, okay? But in general, it's not the case, and this quantity the idea to, to find the, the reduced density matrix is equivalent to find the modular Hamiltonian depends on 
on the problem, one thing is going to be easier than the other one, okay? In general, both are going to be difficult, but... Okay. So once we have uh, all these definitions in mind, we can see what happens when we consider these quantities in quantum field theory. The, the, the problem is, I mean, the, the, the bad news is that this quantity is, uh, becomes divergent, okay? It's, it's not well defined for a quantum field theory. But good news, I have good news also, that uh, the, the structure of divergences that this quantity has, uh, has a some ad admits an, an, an expansion in terms of, um, of the ultraviolet cutoff with a special geometrical, with a strong geometrical uh, dependence. And uh, there are some of these uh, terms in the expansion that are universal. In a sense, I, what I mean when I say universal is that are independent of the regularization scheme we use. So uh, in, these, in these coefficients, there are some information about the theory that is hidden. It's uh, universal information in that sense. So let's see um, what happens if we put our theory in the lattice, where we don't, yes. For the modular Hamiltonian, this is the definition. It's the operator that appears here in the exponent. The, the, the point is, you can always write the density matrix as the exponential of an emission operator. And this is called, the operator that appears here is called modular Hamiltonian, okay? This is the definition. Depending on the problem, you will, you will have to find out which is this operator, okay? It's, it's not, from the very beginning, you don't know what is the, the modular Hamiltonian. In fact, there are only few cases where we know the complete expression of this modular Hamiltonian, okay? And uh, it can be a local operator, a non-local operator, so it can be a very complicated expression in general. In general. But uh, it, it, take this as a definition of the modular Hamiltonian, okay? Just the operator that appears in the exponent. You can always express a, the, your density matrix in this way, always. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here, this is for a thermal state, okay? For a thermal state, you know that the probabilities are given by this expression here, then as you know that the density matrix is related with the probabilities, so by definition, so this is the expression, the operatorial expression for the density matrix. Once you have the density matrix, you can calculate the von Neumann entropy associated with this. And what you get is this expression here, which is exactly what tells you the second law of thermodynamic, okay? So what I'm trying to show you is that all these different interpretations of the entropy as a measure of disorder, information, uncertainty, entanglement, all, all comes from the same thing in a way. Some definitions are more general than other ones, but the deeper are all the same. 
The point is that sometimes this operator here is given by the Hamiltonian of your system and sometimes not. In the case, this thing is different from the Hamiltonian of your system, and I'm going to show you examples. Uh, okay, it's not a thermal state. Okay? Not the thermodynamic entropy. In, in fact, the entanglement entropy has a behavior different from the, the standard thermodynamical entropy. It satisfies an area law instead of a volume law. I mean, there are, there are many properties we are going to discuss that uh, makes a difference. But in, in a way, I, I, I find this, this is a nice expression for the entanglement entropy because it shows you that the differences are subtle. I mean, it, it, it's, it's not... Uh, they are not uh, two different things. They live in the same family, in a way. So I, I, let me at least in, introduce what, what I was expecting to do today, but I believe I'm going to, to finish next time. Uh, the idea is that um, in the lattice, these divergences of the entanglement entropy disappear. We, we are going to, to discuss in detail the, the, these divergences, but in the lattice, everything is well defined. So, uh, suppose, uh, let me let me see how far we can arrive. Suppose um, we are interested in a region B, as usual, induce a partition in the Hilbert space, and uh, suppose our global state vacuum, and we are going to consider Gaussian systems, what I mean is that all the information of the theory is uh, in the two-point functions, okay? You have the, the weak theorem. Okay? So, for example, uh, we are going to take the vacuum in okay? And let's say we have uh, a collection of uh, operators um, by, by with uh, canonical commutation relations. Okay, and we are going to give a name to the two-point function of phi. Let's call it x, and to the two-point function phi, let's call it p. Okay. Uh, what I mean with, uh, yeah, with Gaussian system, let's say that the endpoint functions okay, can be written in terms of products of, of two-point functions. Okay, this is weak theorem. Up. Uh, this is what we are going to discuss next time. Okay, I, I will uh, I will give you a, 
a method to calculate the entanglement entropy in terms of these, of these correlators, okay? And, and perhaps it's going to be clear this idea of writing the density matrix as an exponential of a Hamiltonian operator, okay? We will, we will see that the eigenvalues of this Hamiltonian operator is related to the x and p uh, two-point functions, okay? So we are going to get at the end an expression for the, the, for the entanglement entropy in terms of these two quantities here. Okay, questions? Yes. Well, the idea is that when this Hamiltonian is given by the Hamiltonian of the system, then what you get is, is the thermodynamic entropy, okay? Otherwise, you're in a different case. So, in general, it's not going to be true. Yes, the point is that um, this comes from quantum information, okay? The, the, this idea. But if you want to measure correlation, in a way, entanglement is a measure of the correlations between the degrees of freedom that lives inside and outside your region. Okay, if you are not, if you are not, a, if you if you don't start with a pure state, you cannot write from the very beginning your Hilbert space as a tensor product. It's not possible. So, or even if you're, I mean, th there are there are too many things. Too many ways to say to say the same thing. For example, if uh, we are going to discuss when when for gauge fields that, in fact, you can have your your the the fact that you choose a region is equivalent to choose a local algebra associated to this region. This is perhaps the 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 way mathematically. Uh, well defined to say that you choose a region. What you choose is a local algebra associated to this region. In general, this local algebra can, can have a center. If you have a center, a, a, a center means that you have a set of operators that commute with everybody, then you cannot write your Hilbert space as a tensor product. In that, in that case, you don't have a good definition for the entanglement entropy, okay? Uh, in the case of gauge fields, I understand what you're saying because the, uh, what the links between them. But my question is that uh, why you are uh, relating the decomposition of the Hilbert space to why entanglement is not a good measure? I understand that entanglement is not a good measure because uh, for non-pure states because uh, there are mixtures of quantum effects and non-quantum effects. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, I was thinking always that the decomposition of the Hilbert space for non-gauge theories, I'm saying, say let's, let's just focus on scalar field theory, then the decomposition is not related really to what state you are looking at. No, 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 of course, of course. These are two different things. But the point is that if you have or not a decomposition of your Hilbert space as a tensor product, it has to do with the, the existence of a center. And this is something that can happen also in scalar fields. Not only, it's, it's not only on gauge fields. I mean, the, the naive um, explanation we have that we say, okay, the, the excitations are not point-like, so you have the Wilson loops, and then you cannot divide I mean, your space so easily, it's not true. I mean, in general, also for scalar fields, you can choose your local algebra in such a way that you have a center on the boundary. So it's more general than that. But it, it's true, we are, we are talking about two, two different things. One thing is if you start with a pure state, then the reduced density matrix 
gives you an entanglement entropy that is a good measure of entanglement. And, and you are right that there are, these are two different uh, subjects, yes. Questions? Thank you.